Hello everyone and welcome to Fashion Fridays here at Royal News Network. Today we are going to go over Catherine the Duchess of Cambridge's tour, Caribbean tour wardrobe. Yes, I promised this video last week and I'm finally getting to it and I'm so excited. I love fashion, I love royal fashion and so I thought this tour was, there were several hits and a couple misses. So we'll go over every outfit and let me know what you think, which one is your favorite, and which maybe fashion item would you even like to buy if you could. And oh, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. As I'm recording this, I'm at 998 subscribers. I'm so excited. So I'm hoping to hit an even a thousand today. Hopefully I can get to that. And so, yeah, if you'd like to subscribe, we have so many things here. We go over, you know, fashion, jewelry, television shows and movies and news and gossip, of course, as well. And history, because I do love history. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys. So the tour began in Belize and Catherine set off the plane in a custom made Jenny Packham peplum kind of skirt suit type thing. And she paired it with some Emmy London pumps. So I'm obsessed with pumps partially because I watch Royals all the time. So I really, really want a pair of Emmy London pumps at some point. I don't know if they have a store in London, but I'd love to like figure it out. I love this cobalt blue shade, which they actually did. They've custom made them for her, but they went ahead as well and put them on their website. So I'll put a link. Oh yes. And this is important as well. I'll link everything I can down below. And if I find something similar, I'll link it as well. So yeah. So this was a pretty simple outfit. It has a lace overlay. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not my favorite, but it's, you know, it's a good look. And obviously, you know, if you're from London, if you've ever been to London, it's very wet and rainy most of the time. And so this is definitely, you know, kind of being in the Caribbean, definitely a different environment. And so it seems a tinge heavy, but you know, I don't know. It's her wardrobe. She can wear what she wants and she wore some other great things. So guys, that is the first look for the first day. And they met with the, um, they met with the prime minister that day. And so that was kind of a quick, they arrived in the country later in the evening. And so they didn't have a lot of time, but yeah, that was her first look. All right. So for the second day she wore, which was they guys, they had a fantastic day. The second day, it looked like they had so much fun dancing with the villagers and Hopkins. It just looks like they had a really, really grand time. And so for her second day, you know, she knew she was going to be kind of more kind of a bit more out there. They were going to go to a cocoa farm and everything. And so she wore this Tory Burch dress. And so if I can find it, I'll link it. Cause I tried to look for it and I couldn't find it. I think this is super cute and great. It looks like it looks very, very functional for the day. And it just looks very summery. It looks like they both got a pretty good tan while they were out there. And so it looks like she had, I just really do like this. She paired it with a pair of Stuart Weitzman sandals. And she's had these since at least 2014. So she's had these for quite a while and kind of the first couple years of her marriage, she kind of had these infamous uh, wedge cork shoes from Stuart Weitzman as well. But I will say I love Stuart Weitzman. I think they make great stuff. And what's awesome about them is they often go on sale sometimes for really, really great prices. So if you're in the United States, especially Nordstrom Rack, that's the place to be. So check it out if you're ever interested. And she also paired it with, uh, I, I like to watch, um, go to the Royal Dish website. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. So it's kind of, uh, kind of more of a, it's a, it's a forum site. And so I've, I learned a ton about Royals from reading that site and somebody had, and this was many, many years ago. Now somebody had on their little icon for their thing. It's like, I want to be a taco purse, taco, taco purse. That's what they put for that purse. So she actually wore that clutch for the first time in Canada. She wore it to the can she paired it with her Canada day outfit. So when I saw that, I was like, all I could see was taco purse, taco, taco purse. Yeah. So anyways, that was the second look for the second day. All right, guys. So for their third day, although this was their second full day in country, Catherine and William went to some Mayan ruins. I've always wanted to see Mayan ruins. That's probably one of the only reasons I've wanted to go to Mexico. I'm just, I don't, I'm not really a, a beach beach person, but I like history and I like ruins. So that, that just tickles my fancy. And so she paired this. So this was a very casual outfit because not only were they at this pyramid, they ended up going and uh, spending some time with some British troops that were out working in the jungle as well. So for this day, she wore a John Lewis double front scoop neck top, a G star high G shape cargo skinny jeans and dark olive. 
and she wore these uh, Superga sneakers that she has. Uh, her earrings were spells of love, medium twist, and she had some of her Ray-Ban sunglasses, which I do really like, Catherine's Ray-Ban sunglasses. Like, she's worn them several times. I really do like them. And so I really loved this look. It was kind of a casual Indiana Jones style look, but with a bit of a modern twist. And so it seemed very fitting for the environment. Although I will say there's a couple pictures and these were pictures taken mostly for like by the Royal reporters on like their camera phones. So these weren't the professional photographers. And it seemed like the, the shirt was kind of thin cause you could kind of see, you know, her belly button and everything. And I know you guys probably think that's so crazy. Why do you even care? It's just kind of one of those like very professional Royal protocol things. Like they try to be as professional as possible. So I feel like maybe if she didn't tuck her shirt in, but I don't know. It's up to you. She also added when they were out in the jungle, she changed up her shoes and she added kind of this, um, kind of safari style jacket that she wore. The safari style jacket was scotch and soda or scotch underscore soda. And she wore a, um, a pallidum, some boots in olive green. So it looks like they had a great, great time, but it was an evening look, which was a total surprise. So this trip, I really feel like was Catherine's color tour. <laughs> she wore a lot of bright colors and this dress. So this is a vampire's wife dress and she had her hair slicked back and there's just something, it's like a metallic pink, color i'd love to see kind of what what the fabric is like up close because she's worn the vampire's wife it's a particular brand she's worn it before in green but this was kind of a magenta pink and i'd love to see how the the fabric actually kind of shimmers but it kind of had this ethereal quality to it because it moved great with her and then she had kind of these long ties in the back that almost kind of seemed like tails and so i don't know i just loved like kind of the tail thing because it was kind of unexpected and i kind of i really kind of liked that and so she paired that in addition to with um some new shoes from aquazura or sorry jimmy Choo and the um onita london um drop earrings which she's worn before the jimmy shoes are repeats i don't remember seeing those before anyways royals wear so much like, you know, if you've been watching Kate Middleton for a long, long, or Catherine, the Duchess of Kate Middleton for a long, long time, you almost lose track of all the stuff she's worn. And she's worn a lot. And there's, there are some years where I paid more attention to it than others. And so, yeah, I don't remember when she wore those shoes, but apparently she did at one point. So that was kind of how she ended her day. It was like at reception at the ruins, which was so cool. I bummed I didn't get to go and so uh, I thought about going but then I was like eh, everything's really expensive right now so anyway so that was her look for day three and then on the next day they headed out to Jamaica and so for arriving at the airport Catherine went with a very much a surprise so we've seen Catherine dip a little bit more into vintage and she definitely did this on her way out of Belize she had this vintage belt jacket which was red that she apparently got in college from, it's a St. Laurent jacket, and it's just very much a surprise, and she paired it with pants. Catherine has been dipping into pants more, and she's di she dipped into some white pants and some white shoes from Aquazura, and it just had very much a, a Caribbean high street, I don't know, I just loved, I loved the, <laughs> the look. I really, really wanted the shoes. Are too pricey for me, but I really, really loved the look. I mean, that's something we haven't really seen her in much, and I think she, it really, really flattered her, and she looked fantastic as she was leaving. She also had a small uh, Mulberry London bag, so in case, and it was an all white as well. So Kate was really dipping into the white on this tour, which was great. And she landed in Jamaica in a bright yellow rock sand dress. It's a Bridget and so the dress actually is originally sleeveless. She added sleeves. I want this dress so bad. I love dresses. I have vast majority of my clothes are dresses. I just paid a, a boatload of money to do my dry cleaning for my spring dresses. And I just, I love, I love dresses. I think they are fantastic. I think they are, they're very flattering for my body style. I know not for everybody, but they're very flattering for me. So I just really, really love dresses. And I love how Catherine was leaning into dresses. Um, and some of the ones that she chooses, I think are fantastic. She had her hair up in a ponytail. She wore the same Aquazura shoes. And she also, did she add anything else? And she also added a Ferragamo clutch in white, which is new. So 
yes, I will, again, link everything down below that I'm able to find, but I just love this look. I think it's fantastic. And then she dipped into vintage again. So this was a vintage dress that she wore to Trenchtown. And there was a little shawl that came with it, and they, they, they adjusted it so it had the straps on the dress were thicker, but it was very much, it had a very much a Caribbean vibe. It, they wore it when they visited Bob Marley in Trenchtown. And so it was just really a very, very interesting, unique look. It had very much a 50s vibe, which I do love. Now I will say, and I would, I've criticized the same thing with Megan, so I can't leave out Kate. I prefer it, and I know this is silly, that they have some sort of sleeve. I don't know why, it's just like, because Megan wore this dress that had kind of spaghetti straps on it. Well, she did that a couple times actually. And so um, it's good to see Catherine branching out, but I do say I prefer it when they, I mean, I'm glad she added a thicker strap because I think I made it made that better. But for some reason, I don't know why, I mean, I'm old fashioned, let's, let me just say. And so it's nice when the shoulders are covered because it's, it's hard because it's like, if she was on her own, like totally, I wouldn't care at all. But it's, it's just one of those things where it's just like professional. I feel like even though people do it all the time, I totally get that. People do it in my office. I feel weird if I'm going around sleeveless. It just seems weird. <laughs> so I don't do it. But hey, she did it. And she paired this dress with some Russell and Bromley, Bromley slingbacks, which are new. And I think that's a pretty manageable brand. And she wore some steels and mantras earrings from a Jamaican designer. So Catherine's really great. She buys a lot of British fashion and a lot of, tries to incorporate some local fashion into her looks. And so that is something that Catherine does exceptionally well. And that's what royal ladies are supposed to do on tours because they're really supposed to be highlighting their country. So they're kind of pseudo ambassadors. So what do they do? They wear, you know, they wear British. You know, the first lady of the United States should generally wear American designers most of the time. Just because again, it's you're putting money into your own economy and you're also wearing the style that really are in, you're really promoting you know, the brand of your country, whatever that happens to be. So I think that was a really good look. It seemed like they had a great time. There's obviously some controversy that went down regarding some of the pictures taken, which was totally not their fault. But I think they did a great job, especially managing the next day. So the next day, Catherine wore an Alexander McQueen uh, suit. And so, you know, pants and jacket, and she paired it with an orange Ridley London uh, silk cream crepe top. And she had uh, another bag. This was a Willow Hilson vintage Raffia and beads vintage bag from the 1960s. She had uh, Jimmy Choo Romy pumps in 85. So that's a, if you ever get pumps, that's a better manageable style than some of like the 105 and stuff that she wears from time to time. Cause I have, you know, some of those in various lengths and yeah, the 85 is more manageable. Although I love, I love high heeled pumps. They just, they make my heart sing. What can I say? And uh, she wore again some steel and mantras uh, jewelry. And so I really love that Kate is finally delving into the suits. She always wore dresses, coat dresses, all these sorts of things. Like, and I, again, I love dresses, but I also love a really, really nice suit. I think there's something really kind of sexy when a woman can wear a really nice suit. There's just something about it. I appreciate it. And so for the evening, Catherine broke out another Jenny Packham dress. And this one was definitely a showstopper, although I do have mixed feelings. So this dress to me is very 80s and can also seem kind of juvenile. The color is fantastic. Her hair looks amazing. Her makeup looks incredible. The jewelry she wore that was loaned to her by the queen, these emeralds, oh my goodness, they are stunning. Absolutely stunning. And so it was a really, really gorgeous look. But I just, I'm not a big fan of the, the ruffles and the bead, so it wasn't really beading. And there's a picture where it almost looks more like stitching maybe perhaps instead of, cause it, it's like bejeweled instead of, you know, sparkle or something, I don't know. So I don't really like how it was bejeweled. <laughs> so, but I mean, it, the bejeweling gives it dimension, but I don't know, I, I would have liked that sparkle and pop in just a different way, but I love the color, love the makeup, love the jewelry, so I think in that way, it was really, really fantastic. I just was not a fan totally of the look. It moved gorgeously, she looked absolutely beautiful. I believe she wore that, again, with her Jimmy Choo, Choo shoes, and so she did look gorgeous in it, no doubt. 
just not my cup of tea. And the 80s are really coming back, especially for the last look. Okay, guys, and I totally forgot about this look, believe it or not. So this is the gorgeous Alexander McQueen lace dress with the hat. This was for a passing out ceremony in Jamaica. Some people really criticize them for, you know, riding on the Land Rover and everything, which was a request by the Jamaican government. And it was to kind of reenact when the king, the, sorry, the queen and Prince Philip were there. I just thought this was an utterly amazingly gorgeous look. One of her best of the tour. I don't think it made my top, but it's like one of the most beautiful of the tour. It kind of is reminiscent of the queen's outfit in the 1950s when she was in Australia. So Catherine was really dipping into the vin vintage vibe on this trip. And I just think that this is fantastic. Although I will say she has a couple of white lace dresses that are very, very similar to this. And I think maybe she could have reworn something for this. I understand why she was trying to emulate the queen, but honestly, I think she could have reworn something else and it would have been just as gorgeous. So yes, this is the look for the passing out ceremony. When they uh, left the country in Jamaica, she put on an Amelia Wickstead dress that she's worn before, and she paired that with some um, Jim Vitro Rossi, uh, so some of those pumps. And she also paired it with some uh, Kiki McGonagall earrings. She is a huge fan of those Kiki McGonagall earrings. She has many, many, many of them. And so, and she, I'm not a fan of Amelia Wickstead. She's kind of hit and miss for me. So the dress isn't bad. I don't know if it's great. But when she landed in Jamaica, ugh, sorry, not in Jamaica, when she landed in the Bahamas, ugh, I did not like the Bahamas arrival dress. It's another Milia Wickstead. It has two flaps down on the front. And then what's kind of interesting is Crown Princess Mary wore a similar dress in terms that it had a similar fold over um, piece that kind of gave it an asymmetrical neckline. And I do really like asymmetrical necklines. I think there's something interesting about them but I really don't like, I really don't like this one. It's, I feel like maybe they were supposed to go down further. I think it would have been better if it was just one flap instead of two. I just didn't like it. She poured it, she paired it again with those Giamventito Rossi pumps. I really need to learn how to say that. So yeah, and she had her hair in a, um, in a ponytail, which I really, and I really liked her, um, her earrings, which were Suzanne, but the, and they were turquoise. But what's also kind of weird is she put like these pearl pins in her hair, but the pearl pins and the turquoise didn't match. So this is one of those weird things where it's like, Catherine is, I think, feel like utterly fantastic about putting outfits together or whoever works with her helps her really get some good outfits together. I just feel like the, the earrings were, like maybe they couldn't get her hair to wrap around the ponytail right. I don't know, I just wasn't a fan of the pearls. I wasn't, you know, this whole look. I love the earrings, but the rest of the look I think can go. Something, something more interesting. So for their full, ugh, so for their, so for their first full day in the gym, for their first full day in the Bahamas, Catherine wore this mint green self portrait dress. So self-portrait for me is a bit hit and miss. I don't like the white dress Kate has that self-portrait. Actually, a couple royal ladies had that. Um, Princess Sophia of Sweden has worn it. Um, Crown Princess Metmar of Norway has worn it and her daughter Ingrid Alexandra has worn it. I'm just, I feel like self-portrait is a bit hit and miss because they, they add too much fuss to things sometimes, which I'm not particularly fond of, but I actually really, really like this. And it was still last time I checked available on Netta Porter and it was only like $540, which is a lot, but you know, it's also kind of a designer ish dress. And she paired it with those Jimmy Choo shoes again in white, which kind of encouraged me to look at some white slash taupe shoes and some, um, and she also wore some Nadia Irina Maya earrings, which I believe maybe were a Bahamian designer. And I will admit they, they had some struggles too. So they got caught in a torrential downpour arriving at the school. So I did feel sorry for them because that is hard. It's hard to dress for something like that, especially if you're not used to it. I used to live in Washington and Washington's kind of like uh, London and, and uh, the UK in general, where it's, it's very wet. Oftentimes you're almost always wet. However, it, it's generally like misty, a little bit of rain, like torrential pour down rain. Like the first time I experienced that, it was just like, 
I've never experienced anything like that. And the nice thing is generally blows through and blows out. So it's kind of nice. And then for the next part of their day, they did something, they, they got, uh, they did kind of a, uh, a little mini regatta and they had a sailing competition, which they've done for most of their tours. Catherine and William are very competitive. They did this with canoes in Canada. They've done, uh, these regatta competitions before one time it was with their children. And so they did it this time. And Catherine wore this triboard sailing waterproof jacket, which they didn't need. And she also wore this Gill Marine Women's Crew Polo, her Superga shoes, Ray-Ban sunglasses, which she probably didn't end up using, and uh, some Brewer cashmere woven leather, leather belt and her Spells of Love medium um, hoop earrings. And so they did it. And they also learned a bit about fishing in the community and those sorts of things. So they did a couple of things right there. And then they went out into the ocean to do the, cha to do the regatta and they got utterly soaked so mad props to them that's not easy especially when the whole world is watching you and Catherine has very um her hair can get very very like especially in the humidity if you saw her in the south asia tour there were some days where it's like her hair looked utterly untamable and so uh, with the humidity and so being like soaking soaking wet is not fun so the rainstorm blew through again they were in on the water as well so they just got really really wet but they dealt with it great and it's kind of funny to see the future king and queen of england in shorts but it was also great to see and so yeah being casual and so for and it, this was kind of their last they they were they did do a couple engagements the next day but this was their last full day in uh, the bahamas so they had a reception event and catherine busted out this dress and it was an utterly Grace Kelly dress and it was fabulous. It's probably gonna say it's in the ranking for my top look of this tour. So she wore this satin ball gown and she paired it with, it's a Philip, Philippa Lapelli dress, which was the same designer that designed the Flora O. Olivia's dress, um, who was Princess Alexandra's granddaughter. She had this Lulu Guinness um, clutch, her Giamvento Rossi pumps, and these were the Rainia, which are actually bedazzled and quite expensive. And she had her Van Cleef and Arpel necklace and earrings. So she debuted the Van Cleef, um, she debuted these Van Cleef uh, earrings and necklace at the BAFTAs Awards, and she paired it with the gold dress that she wore in Malaysia, which I always never liked that dress. Apparently it was trying to emulate the flower of the country and just look like giant gold polka dots. I just did not like that dress. I just did not like that dress. And so she paired it with that and I felt like those, that necklace and earrings just did not go with that look. But this look, it really, really did go with because the simplicity of the look, you could kind of make the earring. It would have been better, I think, with an even bigger statement piece. And so hopefully we'll see this look again. It's utterly gorgeous. It reminds me of Grace Kelly, kind of the 50s ball gown style. It's just really, really, really pretty. Her hair was slicked back and we got to see them as they were walking to the event. They were holding hands, which was really cute. Um, this was kind of in their hotel and kind of, I believe, as they were leaving as well. Because obviously people People talk a lot about Harry and Meghan's PDA. Catherine and William always keep that pretty close, so it's great to see them do that. Although I will say, again, I made comments about this with other people, but the bottom of the dress did look a little wrinkled. And so I don't know if that's something she could have totally helped, but it was, a, you know, and I think maybe they were in the car for quite a bit before, the, I don't know, but the bit of the bottom of the dress looked a little bit wrinkled. So that's my only point I take away. And so for their final day, they went to see some of the victims of a hurricane and Catherine wore this Rixo Izzy dress in a, it's a pink marble in a zebra pattern. She had her Emmy London uh, clutch and some espadrilles, um, Carnina, Carnina wedge espadrilles and so Nadia earrings and she had uh, some lenses, some Finlay and Co sunglasses. And so I, I did like this look. It wasn't my favorite, but I do like the pink. I think the pop of color is great. And I was watching some of their videos going around and this might seem, if you're not a avid royal watcher, you may go, what does this matter? Catherine has really come out of her shell and is engaging a ton more. And they walked over to the kids. They were chatting with them. You saw her voice because there was a lot of comments as well about Catherine making her accent more posh. And I think maybe it was an exhib exhibition of her nerves that she was actually it was in, in making an impact on her accent. You know, she was 
you know, some ladies like who's really nervous and from the South, maybe their Southern accent comes out more or no, let's reverse that. Maybe a Southerner person, you know, think of Reese Witherspoon in Sweet Home Alabama. And, you know, she starts off in New York and she's kind of hiding her accent. But as she is back in the South, her Southern accent comes out. Because in the United States, sometimes the Southern accent is not considered, you know, the best one. And so she she's able to kind of relax and I, you see her language rela re relax and her accent. And so it was just really cute to see both of them interacting and she took a little bit of a dare and a she's more adventuresome than William or maybe it's an, an aspect of their competition but she ate some sort of, I think it was like some sort of live sea creature or something but she it was some sort of aphrodisiac too. Maybe Cambridge baby number four is on the way guys. Wouldn't that be awesome? I don't think so but Anyway, so, but for their departure, Catherine, we mourn because this was a hideous look. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't like Al Allison to reach his stuff. I think, I don't like the drop waist. A lot of her stuff has that. I haven't liked anything Catherine's worn from that brand at any point. I liked the blue polka dot one when she wore it in the picture for Charles's 70th birthday. I thought I actually didn't mind it then, but actually seeing, but I could only see half of it, seeing the full thing. But this one is like a 80s reject monstrosity. It is yellow, it has a pattern, it has poofy sleeves, and it has ruffles, and it has a bow. I mean, it is just, I hate it so much. It's so bad. It's really, really bad. And the disappointing thing about it is that they should, she should have, I mean, you can't, you can't account for everything on tour, but because there was so much negative publicity with this tour, she really should have ended it on a strong bang. Obviously she couldn't anticipate every, you know, everything, but it's really unfortunate that her ugliest look came at the, you know, as she was departing. Luckily it wasn't like a whole day thing. So we can, so we got a ton of pictures of that ugly thing, but I think it's kind of sad that it wasn't a better departure look. I mean, I love that, that she put her hair in a ponytail and it was, she paired it with her Jimmy Choo pumps again, some Ferragamo, a Ferragamo clutch and some Ocean Tides um, earrings from Pavrick Mavros. I don't know. I just think that thing is just so ugly. Alexander Reach's stuff to me, I just, I do not like it. I didn't like the dress she wore to um, Prince Philip's service at Thanksgiving as well. Didn't like that. Didn't care for the hat either. It just seemed out of place too, but I don't like any of Alexander Reach's stuff. So for when it comes to this court tour, I think her winning look was a blue satin ball gown. Hopefully we see that thing many, many times to come because it's classic, it's elegant, and will never go out of style. And that's what's great about royal fashion. If you like really follow like general royal fashion and just utilize those silhouettes, your your wardrobe will never ever go out of style because it's always classic. And so, and so, but my worst is definitely that Alison to reach stress that things should be burned. And it probably costs way too much money. It should be burned. So anyways, those are my picks. So let me know which was your favorite tour look. I would love to know, and hopefully we will see you guys again here very, very soon. Bye.